fans of the Horus Heresy, Warhammer 40,000, the Imperial Guard, the Militia, alternative resin science fiction main battle tanks, and heavily armoured World War II British Army infantry tanks. Thank you very much for joining me for an unboxing video of this packet. And this is something I've been waiting to do a review of on the channel for a long, long time now. But because of a postal error, this whole thing got delayed by well over a month. Anyway, I can do it now. And what we're going to be looking at is one of the rare examples of a science fiction resin tank model for use with heroic 28mm scale gaming. And this particular example is the Matilda Fury tank by Victoria Miniatures based in Australia. Long time viewers and fans of the channel will know that I'm a big fan of Victoria Miniatures. I've covered some of their miniatures previously and when they announced that they were actually going to make a tank to go with their infantry range for 28mm science fiction gaming I was really excited and well we're going to have a look at one that's just arrived today. So. That's enough procrastination, let's go in and open this box. Now, there's more than, I've bought more than just a tank here, and this is kind of like unlocking a couple of projects that I've been waiting for these parts on. The other thing that's in here are some parts that are for my Sisters of Silence Force, uh, for playing the Talons of the Emperor in the Horus Heresy, so we're going to have a look at those as well. Now, there's, um, there's a number of options with the Matilda science fiction tank by Victoria Games. There's two variants on the turrets. There's the boss turret, which is kind of like a big, shall we say, slab-sided riveted turret. And then there's the Fury turret, which is a smoother looking turret, and that's one I've bought. And there's also a Sponson weapon set, which I've also acquired. So this is kind of like the full kit um, that Victoria do. Right, so we have Matilda Boss Tank and some other bits and pieces. So let's get that out. So what we've got there is we've got the weapon options. So really cool. My heads and the boss tank itself. Right, I'm not going to tease you, so we'll start by looking at the tank. And what we're going to do in this review, we're going to look at the parts and I'm going to appraise the quality a little bit. So, does this, oh, a bit more sellotape to get past yet. I'm not going to talk about the cost of this model in this video, I'm going to revisit that when I do my final review because as a person who lives in the UK I've got a slightly different perception of cost on this kit than someone who lives in Australia for example. Right, so let's have a look. Yeah, okay, interesting. Well, <laughs> so they've sent me the wrong kit for a start. This is the turret for the boss tank. Um, so Oh, oh, never mind. Okay, well, it looks like I'm going to be asking for a, another turret, but I'm going to roll with it and let's review this turret. So, as I said, this is a slab-sided turret, and the whole kit has been designed in mind of giving you all the weapon options you might possibly want if you're going to play, for example, as guard or any other form of militia Chaos Renegade list. So it's, it's really well conceived in that regard. And then we'll lay the parts out as we go. So what do we think? Well, this looks lovely. It's very nicely detailed. The casting quality looks superb. It's a tiny little bit of a mold seam there. A little bit that's kind of running round. A touch of an air bubble there. But all in all, that's beautifully turned out. Tiny little bit of cleanup, nothing big at all. But a great looking turret. Right, what's next in the pack? So let's do the hull before we move on to the accessories. So here we get the hull and it comes almost in like in a semi-assembled form. <laughs> I just noticed something that's quite funny. And now when we look at this we can also begin to understand how the clever modular weapons design works on this tank. So here we go. Well, straight away, this looks really rather nicely done. Whoops, okay, dropped a bit there. I'm gonna take 
all the tracks away and we'll start by looking at the main hull so here we go one main hull we've got like we've got a couple of lights we've got a couple of towing lugs we've got a um, presumably this is going to be a mount for an anti-personnel weapon like a heavy bolter or a heavy stubber or machine gun we've got a driver's hatch i like that with a couple of latches or handles perhaps on it and this looks like it's hinged and then the upper tank looks quite chunky but plenty of detailing lots of riveting and nice panel lining this is really nice the engine deck we've got what look to be exhaust grills air cooling and then these look like the maintenance hatches and if you've ever seen world war ii tanks and how they have an armored engine housing or armored engine covers these look really rather authentic and then we've got a bit of external detailing and i imagine there's some perhaps exhaust parts that are going to attach onto that and we've got around here around here and then there's absolutely no mistaking who made this victoria miniatures now this has been sold by Victoria Miniatures, and I believe it's probably the artistic design of Victoria Lamb. But it has been made by a separate company in North America, I believe, which is this Dark Wolf Studios. I don't know if this is stuck in place or what. I'll assume it is, so I don't want to break it. Let's talk about the quality here. So I've got some gates to finish cleaning up. A little bit of the seam to sand off there, that's nothing too dramatic. So a little bit of filing to do on the way around. But yeah, not much at all really. Very um, very nice it turned out. And you may be able to tell this from a camera view, but this is lovely and dry feeling. I can tell that this hasn't been, yeah. this isn't swimming in release grease or release agent from a mold. So yeah, it feels, it feels good. Now, there's a, you see here, this is looking a bit dinted. What I suspect that needs doing is heating up and I think that will probably return to its original shape, which is something like that side. So yeah, lovely hull. And then let's just do a quick push fit. So yeah, the turret fits on there perfectly. Right, then we have the track. So the track, so it's an all-in-one unit. So no faffing around with building track links on, which is always a relief. And those of you who have watched my Land Raider Armoured Proteus videos will understand why immediately. Anyone who's built a Land Raider Proteus will probably understand as well. There's a little bit of flash to take off between the wheels. I don't think there's much work to do, but it's in a fiddler location, so there's a little bit to do there. A couple of gates to clean off on the track links on the underside, but the most important bit is what you see. And, you know, you could imagine that this might be some sort of double-winged eagle device. Now, notice how we've got this open panel at the side of two recesses. So this has been pre-drilled for the magnets. And we then get this block. It's kind of like a continuation of the armoured side. And that goes in like that. Just while we're on this, look at the nice fine riveting details on that. That looks really good. That's a pretty decent fit. Might just do a little bit of clean up just to get it centralised. Got a little bit of a slip there. Nothing will be seen. So that's going to go like that. So that's fine. But the clever thing here is... This is where your sponsor options come in. And this is why this kit is so clever. It's been designed from a word go with a complete modular set of weapons. So it's absolutely excellent. If you want no sponsors, so let's imagine you're playing solar auxilia. None of those vehicles can get sponsors. You just do that. However, as we're going to come on to, if you're playing other lists that do allow, let's say, ooh, a Lehman Russ type tank to have sponsors, then this is perfectly configured. Anyway, excellent quality on that. And then the other side. Looks similar. A little bit of a displacement there, but to be honest, I'm not really that bothered. It's not going to be visible. Now that slip there is quite bad. I don't know if I can fix that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe that's a real pain to try fix those. But apart from that, that's okay. But yeah, I don't think that should have really been sent out with that mold slip on it. Same principle as the other side. We've got a block that drops in like that. So if you don't want your sponsors, you can do that. Probably one question is, how do you actually take this out once it's built? So, you know, it's one thing putting a magnet on it. Next thing is actually getting it off. Yeah, maybe that might 
may have to play around with making sure that's not too strongly attached. Just returning to the topic of fit and finish, so the turret fits very nicely and the track units, get them on, yeah they look great, perfect. Yeah, Just a touch of, maybe a touch of clean up here and there, maybe a bit of heat bending but overall that's very nicely turned out, very cleanly cast as well. So let's drop the turret back in. Right, now so as I say I've been sent the wrong parts, I actually asked for the Fury variant, which is kind of like the assault tank version, but as they're here, let's review them. So, these are the turret weapons that you get, and these have been specifically designed to magnetize or push fit, perhaps, so this tank can be armed with anything. Now, guard veterans are going to recognize some of these straight away. Here we have a high velocity armor piercing cannon, perhaps a battle cannon with a coaxially mounted machine gun or twin linked heavy stubber perhaps and these there you go that's lovely so that push fits into there brilliant I don't even think that'll need a magnet really that's a really affirmative fit so that's a battle cannon with twin linked heavy machine gun this is a short barreled high caliber high explosive cannon useful for demolishing targets like a ooh, demolisher cannon yeah that looks great i think actually that will need a magnet it's a little bit loose but it doesn't matter the actual overall fits very good it just wants a magnet to make sure it's held firm the next weapon we have is this pair and this is a pair of automatic cannons there's a nice barrel drilling opportunity there and let's test the fit on those. That's another very firm affirmative fit. So there you go. If you might have a variant of this tank with a twin turret mounted auto cannon. There you go. I'm going to try and get it out again, haven't I? And then finally, there's this enormous long barreled cannon. Perhaps this is a high velocity anti tank gun, again with a twin linked heavy machine gun. And now that uh, looks crazy big. That looks like the sort of cannon that will be extremely effective at vanquishing enemies from a long distance away. I'm just going to put the tracks back on. There you go. That is a truly enormous crazy gun. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to take it off and let's just slide back in what we might imagine to be the default armament, which is a cannon with coaxially mounted machine gun. Like so. Let's now do this packet here. Oh no! Let's now do this packet here. So this looks like a packet of accessories and other components. Right, so what have we got? We've got a, a fuel tank, so I guess that's going to mount somewhere on the vehicle. I'll have to check the Click from instructions, no instructions, but there's photo. There's loads of photos on the Victoria Miniatures website, so that's a fuel tank, very nice. And then we get a couple of exhaust stacks. Let's check the alignment on these. That's beautifully done. And so is that. Excellent. And what else do we have? We've got the turret doors to the turret cupola. That's there. So you could make those either closed or open. If you've got a crewman, you could put crewman in it. Or crew woman, perhaps. And then a couple of pieces of spare track. And they look like they're designed to go there. Like so. Got some nice little details there. We have a, a pintle mounted heavy machine gun weapon. This looks an awful lot like a Bren gun. So really, yeah. Uh, Really nicely done that, but it could be any sort of light or medium machine gun. And in terms of the cast on that, that's very, very nicely done, beautifully turned out. Again, very dry, everything's yeah, everything feels very clean. I mean, I'll still give it a wash as is customary good practice, no but. greasy sliminess to this kit at all. And then we get two weapons which I suspect are supposed to be mounted on that turret mount or that turret position. This could be a heavy version of an anti-personnel weapon firing explosive shells or even bolts. 
and that's going to go there. So a couple of more magnetization options here. And then this is perhaps this is some sort of energy cannon or a laser cannon that might mount on that hull weapon position. And that's basically what you get in the kit. Now, one I actually ordered, which is the Fury tank has got a smoother rounded turret and it's got a, well, a selection of, shall we say, assault weapons instead of the more conventional longer range tank guns. Right, that's the first part of this review. And now we've got what, the extra bits I ordered. This is where those blocks on the side of a tank come in. And that's this kit here. Now, certain science fiction war games allow their main battle tanks to have weapons in side mounted sponsons. And, well, Victoria Miniatures kind of thought about it, didn't they? And what you do is you get this thingy, and it's been ever so cleverly designed as to allow one to take a weapon such as this thing oh well get okay, the right way up so that's yeah it goes like that that one won't quite fit it needs a little bit of the gates cleaning off but yeah, you go the weapon's going to mount in the, the side sponsor like that so you've got heavy bolt launcher a plasma projector and then perhaps some sort of heavy flamethrower or incinerator type weapon there all oh, very nicely detailed it looks nice canvas or rubberized mount housings and then you get this weapon here which maybe that's some sort of fusion gun I wonder if that one might fit that's no not quite no so what let me just grab a knife and then i can show you what it looks like after a little bit of work i've got the fusion cannon in its sponson mount and that articulates and the nice thing is you can put it recessed with the side profile of the tank or articulate it out and now I'll just slide that on to give you a feel for what it's going to look like. And there you go. Yeah, very cool. And then you get a duplicate of each of those. So you can mount it with identically paired weapons. So one of the same on each side. I mean, this model's cost me quite a lot because I've had to import it into the UK. But the sheer versatility that this kit offers, I think adds some real value and justifies a high price. And aside from the fact I really like the look of the model, the versatility of this kit really attracted me to it. So yeah, big thumbs up on that. And then there's the second sponson block. There's a few other bits here which have turned up kind of pleasantly by surprise. So I've got this, I guess this is a female tank commander. This is one of Victoria Lamb sculpts. That's a great looking model that comes with a base. I'm not sure if that's been thrown in as a freebie or if that was actually part of the kit. Um, I don't know. Interesting. It'd be nice just to have that model stood beside the tank to be quite honest. We've then got a sprue of equipment boxes. So these would quite nicely attach onto the exterior of the Matilda tank. And then a laser carbine in a carry sling. Very good. Hmm, nice. And uh, these look nicely turned out, got a little bit of mold seam to clean off, but uh, yeah, really nice to turned out. And then I've got one final thing to look at in this review, which is to do with the Sisters of Silence. And I ordered a set of Victoria Miniatures bare female heads. And well, we've got the usual Copernica of facial expressions, and there's 10 of these. The reason I bought these was the Sisters of Silence, the plastic kit, it's a very nice kit. All the sisters are wearing their characteristic facial covers or masks and I didn't want to have all of mine wearing those and if you look at some of the art particularly from the Horus Heresy card game or the Horus Heresy collected visions by the Black Library you will see that um, not all the sisters wear those face masks. After a bit of a search um, I found these um, heads and I thought they were perfect. So what I will need to do is I'll need to do a bit of a graft of their top knot onto these to uh, get the desired authentic effect. Oh, there goes one of the heads. Very nicely cast. So that was quite a long review. There was a lot to look at. I did want to give you a good tour around the kit and explain a little bit about how it worked. Uh, a slight surprise because obviously I've ended up um, reviewing the boss variant of the tank 
as opposed to the Fury variant that I ordered. I'm sure I'll get that resolved and that hopefully will present an opportunity for a future additional review. So I hope you found this an interesting look at something different and something quite rare in the world of 28mm science fiction gaming, you know, independently made tanks for heroic scale gaming. It's a really good thing to see new manufacturers coming in on the scene, particularly one like Victoria Miniatures, who's got such a great reputation for their designs. I don't know if anyone else has acquired one of these tanks or seen it or um, is thinking of buying one. If so, share your thoughts in the comments. I'll be very interested to hear as always. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.